Welcome to Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. My name is Mumpulu Kiluruma Mohobe. Our objective is to enthuse, inspire, energize, and empower entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of all stripes here in BW and beyond. We do so by inviting these entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs into our makeshift studio. Sometimes we call them to the restaurant, sometimes we go uh, to our studio and we ask them to share their experiential knowledge, their experiences and their expertise. And we ask them uh, as many questions as we can aimed at empowering you also as a viewer. Hello dear uh, viewer, dear listener, greetings. I'm Mumpuluki Luruma Mokobe here, the host of Mokobe Nuggets of Wisdom podcast. As always, we are bringing you impactful, life-changing entrepreneurs who are here to share on uh, cutting-edge information. And I'm here with Mema uh, Monakosi, but as usual, uh, I prefer that uh, she is one who introduces herself. Suffice it to say, one, it's not her first time, and if you subscribe, you'll have seen her appearance here before on behalf of Brian Legacy. And number two, please go to Mohobe Nuggets and Wisdom podcast on YouTube and subscribe right away. It is imperative that you do so. Thank you so much. Mema um, Manakosi, welcome to the studio. Thank you, sir. Thank you for welcoming me. Yes. It's quite a pleasure to be back again. Mm. Yes, sir. Last time we had, I had a wonderful time. Mm. And my business has been, you know, benefited from this Mokobe Nuggets of Wisdom. And thank you, sir, for always yeah. giving us the platform. You're welcome. You're welcome. But but before we talk about your business, uh, just share share a little bit on your background. Okay. My name is Male Bokomon Nakosi Ni Bokhale. I was born and raised in a small village called Sidlamlomu. But uh, the Monakosi name, I'm married to a wonderful husband called White Monakosi from Mount Kodi. I'm a mother of mother to three girls. And I'm a business person. I'm also a professional teacher, teacher by profession. Okay. I'm a trained teacher. Okay, well, let's talk first about Bayern Legacy. What does that company do? Bayern Legacy is a company that has various services that 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 it offers. First, we have a we offer barcode services. Mm. We offer barcode services. Mm. With this barcode services, we help the products to be able to sell to retailers, able to manu- able to export, and mm. able to you know to products to, to be to distributed. A, yeah. Okay, sorry, thank you. Mm. So to have products to reach the market base mm-hmm. by virtually having a barcode. It's mm-hmm. part of branding. Okay. And also what we do is that we o- offer the, the um, you know, just tutoring kind of service mm-hmm. or teaching or okay. educational service, if I may put it in that way. And what's the other company that, that you run? Uh, w- you know, uh, the other company that is trading is a trading name. It's called Toda Academy. Mm. So with Toda Academy, it's a, uh, the Toda is my daughter's name. Mm-hmm. So my daughter, she's five years old and she can read. And I was like, if my daughter can read at five years old, at five years, yes, as a five year old, so there's a possibility that someone would want to benefit from what she has benefited from me as a teacher. And okay. being as a teacher, I've experienced, even though I'm a temporary teacher, I'm, I'm, I'm currently employed as a temporary teacher, but during the lockdowns, I was able to help my daughter with reading and you know, learning just basically. And yeah. I can guarantee you, she can read a novel now. Mm-hmm. And I believe the same mothers can benefit from the okay, same Okay, before service. we talk about our business of the day, mm-hmm. just tell us how, about your last appearance mm-hmm. uh, on Mohobe Nuggets and how the platform helped you. Well, Mohobe Nuggets of Wisdom is quite a good platform for us as entrepreneurs because now business has been run online. You know, with Mohobe Nuggets, when people search for your business, there my buying, my company would appear or would t- take me to the link of Mohobe Nuggets because I was here before and I was mentioned. So Mohobe Nuggets, you know, wisdom, nuggets of, wisdom of Nuggets, it has helped me so much mm. in a great way because I had positive response. Remember the time that I was here, it was during the corona. Yeah, just know, after the lockdown. Just after the lockdown. And after that, I received a lot of calls and I was able to help, you know, our clients from home just having to call, you know, by virtue of being here so i just want to appreciate you for this platform don't be discouraged continue mm-hmm. really helping us and mm. more business i believe that are going to benefit from this mm. platform 
wow. in air. And um, now let's talk about this breakthrough campaign. Why the word breakthrough and why do you call it a campaign? Well, with so sometimes we, go, we hear people saying, my daughter or my child do not break through. Mm. So in the basic of learning, one has to be taught how to read, how to write. During our time, so that's what happens. One should be able to know the syllable that they make up a word. They're able to know the medium, the, the sounds that make be it in Sotswana, be it English. So because of this corona, some of the kids, I think they were rushed through from what I have experienced with having to meet with them. Mm. They were rushed through because how can we learn in four, four and a half hours? You know, and here we are talking about some of the basics they have never met before. They have never Even four and a half hours from 7.30 to... Uh, from 7.30 because we agree because of the, um, the shifts. So it's from 7.30 to half 12, others to half 11 mm-hmm. or to 12. Because mm-hmm. where I am is to twelve, is up to twelve. Mm. So imagine that many, uh, that small hours, and that eight subject to, to cover or six subject to cover, and here the child has not, you know, p- progressed in terms of learning the basic of reading. Mm-hmm. So when you get to standard two, you are taught about physical abuse, mm. and here how I was talking about how is physical abuse supposed to be written, mm. how it's supposed to be read, how is the, uh, the, the, the syllables that make up physical abuse, you do mm-hmm. not even catch those. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a literary campaign. A literacy campaign. Literacy yeah. campaign. Yeah. Now, um, tell me what, what, uh, what inspired it. Well, I, I'm a temporary teacher, so we are employed during the time of Corona, mm. because now the, the 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 classes were cut up into half, into up to thirty maximum mm. in mm. class. Mm. So which means they were, um, my, uh, we, they were short of teachers. So me, I was a trainer, sec- secondary teacher, but my experience, I've worked in primary setup, primary school setup. Mm. So when I, I was given the the class, the time the the, the, the time of oh, no, yeah, Corona, that time of Corona. Mm. So that class was very good. Because remember, they did. I was in standard three. They, they did standard one and two during when the things were, things were just okay. There were no corona. Mm. And then next year, the following year, I was given standard three. We were doing standard two during the time of corona. So out of the thirty students that I was given, only ten could read, like could understand the content, even though they could not comprehend, but they could identify words. Mm. So which means I wondered what did what, what happened. I realized that these kids do not break through. Is it's our term that we used in we use in our in academic world language. Air, language is a language that we use. So they do not break through, and which means they don't know. What it, for example, to write bala, you need ba plus la to make bala. Mm. To to make to. You're talking about kids at standard what? At standard three, I was teaching standard three then, mm-hmm. and this standard three they were doing standard two during the time of when the corona hit. Mm. So when there were many lockdowns, there were. You know, we were even confused as to how the setup of the school should be, mm-hmm. you know, generally. So, and then I wondered what happened. It looks like these kids, they do not catch up when we were taught at that point in time. Mm. So that's when we had uh, Saturday's classes, teaching them basic of reading, mm-hmm. asking parents, let's have Saturday's class, teaching them how to, you know, v- sounds of, 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 of alphabets, sounds in Sotswana, in English, just teaching them, and that class, when I took it, only six passed. By the third, third term, mm-hmm. only six failed. Oh. You mean after you took them uh, over? Over a year. When, when you started, only six passed? But a, with as you ABC. P- yeah. A. But when you took them over? Third term. Yeah. Which means I had, it, I had time to be with them for a year. Mm-hmm. So they may only six now failed. Wow. With D. We did not out have of e out mm. of 30. Mm. Whereas so before there were E's all over the place. There was D's, E's, and there was only, only A, B, C. There mm. were six. Mm. So which means I, I then because um, as well I did my degree in a sociology. So with a, as a sociologist you learn environment, you learn the community that you are. It's mm. just a part of us. Mm. So then I realized, oh, these are the results of Corona. There were many lockdowns. There were many. The the, the time is cut, and here you as a teacher the syllabus was not cut or was not, you know, reduced. reduced mm. You know. So, and you are supposed to teach the same as before Corona. So, which means you are under pressure to balance, to cover the syllabus and balancing to help those that are slow because kids learn in various ways. 
So hence I realized I did my little bit of study, little bit of research, and then I realized what it what I know. When these kids are uh, moving online to learn online, when will that provide uh, the time was will that, come? Was that happening? Hey, with our you know government, uh, I think our government schools we come from different. They come from different backgrounds. I don't think it's going to be easy compared to with the private schools mm. or possible because others have animal, they don't have electricity others even phone you need a phone could you need a special device to do that we need a special a kind of resource to use to do that mm. so i think if we could help there could be that possibility of having online platforms mm -hmm. yeah. so you realized this there was a problem and um how did you then turn it into a business you know as a business person and we are taught that you identify a challenge and then you provide a solution there was a challenge that was introduced by corona and here i came with a solution called breakthrough campaign so breakthrough campaign because as a responsible citizen when you look into the future because entrepreneurs we have that in us you are you are we wonder these kids tomorrow they're going to be in a decision making position you can't even read it a contract how are you going to read a contract that affects a nation maybe there's a trade agreement between Botswana and another country and here you are you are a politician because the politicians are no qualifications to who should qualify or who should be <laughs> take hold of the position and stuff like that mm. so are they going to understand these things when they put our nations more into challenges mm. because obviously they're going to be part of the leadership to some extent so as a nation so we need to work this thing out now well, I'm thinking about the problem more broadly because I think if I'm not mistaken, in fact, I'm reasonably certain that the results for from standard seven, from mm -hmm. three, from five were terrible. Mm. Um, so is this part of the ripple effect from Corona? That could be because uh, for us for we in primary, you know, primary schools, there is a time where we teach kids Hobala, we teach kids how to write if they are the ones that are slow. There's what you call remedial classes. Again. So those remedial classes are for those slow because that you term to be slow or mm. they have a challenge called body dyslexia, dysgraphia. There's, there's what we have, we have to have time for that to allocate for those kids. So we call it remedial classes or remedial mm. exercises. So how when do you have time to remediate this this children and yet you have syllabus to cover within a term? Mm. And what are you teaching four hours or five hours maxi maximum? Mm. Let's so define the two terms you used. One was dyslexia, one the other one was dysgraphia. Yes, sir. Mm. Can you h help us understand what they mean? Dyslexia is a child that have a, a disability in writing. It's a disability, but the child is a challenge in terms of writing. He can't, he, he struggles. No, dyslexia. And dyslexia, he struggles with reading. Mm -hmm, with reading. Yeah, with reading. And then dysgraphia with writing. Mm -hmm. So this one challenge in that she's about motion. She can't one out with TV. And with dyslexia, is she processing comprehension. She can't comprehend. He can't sometimes want to P as a D or as a Q. Is it a problem of vi of the eyes, the optical illusion of something? It also have to do with the processing, uh, the mm. mind. Mm -hmm. It also have to do with that. Mm -hmm. So the child could not uh, differentiate between P, B, D, nine, nearly six. Those are the challenges that the child that the, those kids experience. Mm -hmm. So those kids they need time. Okay. They need patience. Tell about you. Uh, it's about the, your team of qualified teachers. Who are they, and what uh, what can they what what um, what has been the results been so far? Yes, uh, like I said, we are temporary teachers, mm -hmm. so we work by contract, and sometimes we are uncertain as if our contracts are going to be renewed. Kuru, you don't plan well in your life, mm. so then we thought, guys, at least. The government has offered us the skill. We are trained teachers. Others are secondary teachers, but we, we are teaching in primary schools. So at least from this working in primary schools, we have given it, we have gained a skill. Let's use skill to help kids. Let's use this skill to help other children with reading, with writing. So even if our contract cuts, we know that this is going to be continued. So it's a team of of qualified teachers 
who are very passionate about what they do, who are very result oriented, who also are concerned as a responsible citizen of this nation, who knows that the future of this nation is dependent on the small ones that we, we you know, they pass through our hands as teachers. Do they need specialized training for sort of uh, kids who have difficulty learning? Yes, there is what you call special education. But as a, when you have been trained, you pass through this type of disability. When you are trained at UB. When you are trained at UB, I was trained at UB. So mm. you pass those through, even those uh, there are people that specialize in different uh, disabilities, like when I when a learning disability, there are different types of learning disability. And also when I when a student is just disabled, even body. Yeah. The physical disability. Yeah. But here, because you're talking about learning disability, yes, we have those that are trained in that. But generally, you, you, you are trained. There's a course that should be called it's special education. There's a course that basically deals with those. Mm -hmm. And we have what you call, we are taught how to do what you call intervention education plan. So with this plan, you are able to assess the child and identify the chance that the child could have and come up with intervention strategies as how can I help this child with what I've identified as a challenge. Mm. Yeah. So, at UB we are so how many that. students you, do you have currently and you have scope for how many more? We have, uh, with the breakthrough literacy, we have 30 that are very, that, that are regular and consistent. Mm -hmm. 30 students because we started in March. And in March already we have 30 because like I said, online platforms are very important. Mm. Facebook, just sponsoring page, mm. pa the parents were able to respond and they were able to qu quick to bring that child because they really, they're desperate, they really want to see that kids. Nobody wants to see that the, kids the, failing. Like, really failing. Mm. And, so and, really and, and you have the capacity to take up to how many? Yes, we have capacity to take more because we're, we're using a small space in Mokolitani. We have moved to a bigger space in Block 6. Up to how many? Up to how many is 20 per class, 20 mm -hmm. per session. So, and you've got four be four rooms mm -hmm. that could take kids. So, mm -hmm. 20, 20, 20. Mm -hmm. Because there are big rooms. So, close to 100 students, we could take 100. Because also, we do by sessions. Mm -hmm. Two hour session, two hour session, two hour session. So, okay. the parent just tell us the session that he wants to bring the child, and then we slot them there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned uh, those two learning disabilities. What about something as serious as autism? Do you know about that one and you assist uh, parents with children with autism? Yes, we, that's what we, pa we, watch, we go through as when we are trained. Autism, ADHD, you know, so we do assist, but though we have never had a child with have autism, because we are taught how to identify. As soon as the child we are given, we are able to how to assess that child and identify what, what this child could be having one to, even though he's going to need a specialized person, but mm. even though he's going to a special, specialized person, or specialized, you know, helper. They mm. The mother able to know, okay, teacher has identified one, two, three, four, because you identify those things as soon as mm. a week is enough to be able to identify this child as a challenge. Mm. And then you can able to recommend, you can go there to have a proper assessment and that you can be taken to school. Incidentally, have you noticed that there's been a, a proliferation of um, children with autism, ADHD, have you noticed that there's been a growth, a, an explosion, in fact? Yes, that's could that's been a challenge because in our school, there were close to is it twelve or fifteen students that were helped with writing. Mm. Or like they had a person who was helping. To, I mean, for PSLE, mm. they had a challenge with that. So mm. I, I believe that's hence why we are here, mm -hmm. so that parents should not give up and say, "My child has this challenge." So these. Nothing I can do about it. What, for instance, causes a child to have ADHD? I think it comes with D DNA. It, it comes, it, it's not something that, it comes with them being born with it. Because mm. ADHD is a child who is hyperactive. Attention deficit, uh, hyper and hyperactive something disorder. Disorder, yeah. Mm. So that child, he can't concentrate. Five, five, five minutes he wants to stand up. So mm. we, we, as, as a teacher, you put him next to you from time to time write time to time read so you need to so if he's far he's going to be disturbing other students he's good so we are training that for you those are another iep intervention education program um, intervention education program that you could also write as a strategy mm. or you put the child here next to you or in front mm. because when he's at the back 
you see the next child, child writing is disturbed by that mm. or it gets att- you know it's uh, is attentive to it's that a distraction is a distraction for him mm. so they can't concentrate mm-hmm. for more than five minutes mm-hmm. uh, so those child we know how to help them mm. and how to make them concentrate yes yeah. and uh, in the old days we, we we used to resort to corporal punishment is that something that is still has its its place in the community because I, st- I happen to believe that it has a place at ho- in the home, depending on the severity of, of the misbehavior. But I don't know what your views are. Well, my view as a mother, even as a teacher, corporal punishment is it's okay, provided it's done with love. And it's not done in a way that you intend to harm the child or to inflict pain. Because mm. me as a mother at home, I... You inflict moderate pain. Yeah, that there's a, you teach a child that there's a consequence to what you are doing. Anything that you are doing wrong, there's a consequence to that. Mm. But you should let them know what I'm punishing you because of one, two, three, four. Even though that the, there's what you call what time out and stuff like that. Mm. For me, I don't believe in that. This so business of go to your room. No, uh, with I've, this, s- with I've seen parents uh, go to your room or uh, you sit in the corner. I don't know how that so works. That is not a... <laughs> Um, uh, not for me, I don't think it will work for me. But mm. for my kids, though, but the one that comes to us, that lines, we don't punish our lines, we don't beat our lines. Yeah, yet. of course. Yes, but for me as a mother, I believe it's supposed to be. It has a place, it otherwise, you wouldn't be in the Even Bible. The Bible says you, you, you hold S- a rock, spare the, the rod, rod and spoil the child. You spoil the child. Mm. So tomorrow, we're having kids that they don't respect law, mm. they don't respect order, they think that they can just go away with it with mm. anything okay now since this program of uh, breakthrough campaign is fairly new how long do you think it takes for there to be a turnaround if a child theoretically has lost those two years because of COVID how, l- how long does it take to for the child to turn around I think a, a space of a term three to four months mm-hmm. the child would have really captured the basic but if it's not a child that has a de- uh, learning deficiency, learning, learning deficiency or learning disability. Mm. So three to four months is enough to child to be really confident and read fluent. So what are the what would you say are the key interventions that you bring about? Yes, with us, what you do, like I said, we can assess for this child. Is it just difficulty or a disability? Mm. So if it is a difficulty or maybe she just missed some of the stages mm. of learning, so we take them through just the basic A B C D up to Z. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, sometimes they they, they cram. Is it English? They <laughs> they cram. Oh, cram. Oh, cram. Oh, oh they, they they cram. Yeah, they, they memorize. They uh, memorize this thing in a, in a in a short space of time. A like they know A B C D D is next to to E. Mm. But when you call them randomly, others they have a challenge. Mm-hmm. A because sometimes they know B is next to C, mm. but when you say Z A. They they don't don't yeah. Yeah. So we take them through that, and then from there, there's what you call sounds. I agree in this A, B, C, D, up to in this alphabet, there's what you call vowels and consonants. Mm. So we teach them that first, and then from there, we take them that uh, uh, alpha, the alphabet B and alphabet A and T. It's make a word mm. bed. Mm-hmm. And then we teach them B in, in an English sound is bo. Mm-hmm. A, E, T. Book at goes mm. to bed. Mm. So even when you call the child spelling, you know they can visit our page and see how we teach. We normally post these videos so that they okay. can see how we teach these kids. Is it a special program which you studied on the internet, or is it just something that you created yourself? Well, this program I created myself because I'm very passionate with with what I do. The one thing about me is that once I do something, I do it with all my heart. So I went and did my research. Like, like I told you, I'm a trained secondary teacher. Mm. But I was fortunate to work in a primary school. So, and then with the management at school, they train us. I trained myself as well. And I was able to perfect my, my, my you know, Your craft. This skill, my craft and this skill. Mm. And hence why I'm helping our kids mm-hmm. to read and write. And then um, uh, you say that the students who successfully gone through your hands and uh, can you share some of the testimonies you've received? Like I told you that we started in March. Mm. As, I t- as I speak it now, uh, 10 students out of the feet, they can read a sentence, paragraph, and because we normally also have that we, have, we, are, we are happy with 
the progress mm. they've made so far. Because we take vowel by vowel, teaching them like that. So mm. after that, we are happy. We give them a paragraph, and then we give them questions to see if they comprehend what they because they can know how to read, but do not comprehend mm. what is written there. So mm. with the, the ones that we have so far, I'm excited because we even went to Kanye to try and reach out outside Haburu, and it's, it's coming up well. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it said, um, and you pick these things on the internet and elsewhere, that Chinese and Japanese uh, students are taught science subjects as early as kindergarten, mm. you know? How far true is that, and, and is it advisable for us to, to adopt the same approach? I think we need to revisit our, I'm sorry the government, <laughs> but we need to revisit our, our curriculum. Because uh, from the basic, like now, standard seven are taught how to write a letter. Mm. But now we use email. Who does, who writes a letter now? Mm. So you see wha- where syllabus is failing. They're still children. teaching them that. How to write a letter. Mm. Letter you put. Uh, I'm saying they're still teaching them that. Ra? Nobody teaches them emails. No, no, there's no email in our syllabus, mm. primary syllabus. I believe in even junior, we don't have a syllabus where it covers how to write an email, how to write a formal email, how to write uh, just an email to mm. informal email. But you tell them how to write a formal letter, how to write an informal letter. You put your address, your address, mm. uh, if it's a formal address to where you write, date. Mm. And we even penalize them if they don't get it right. But I don't use it in the, in the society. Or anywhere else. Or anywhere else. Mm. Because we use emails, we use, you know, that's how we write letters nowadays. And so that's how you communicate. So what is it going to take to make the necessary changes? I think it, it, it needs to, all the stakeholders must be involved. Mm. Be the government, be those that are in industry who are capable of hiring. People like entrepreneurs. Mm. be part of the, the part, part of the stakeholder and then we sit down and find a way where, where are the society going where is the because we're in a global village mm. we can't say we are in Botswana we do this mm-hmm. we need to compete compete in a that global stage mm-hmm. so if tomorrow a child is taken to school in in America will they cope there will they mm. survive there Thank God, because there is internet, we can study, you can research, you can see well, where am I going, what do need, how much do I need to be prepared for where I'm going. Yeah. But our education system does not provide that. Like now, we don't. We're not talking about debt. You're not talking about tax. You're not talking about how to start a business. We fumble around, mm. and sometimes after making a lot of mistakes that have cost us, that have put us in so much, That's so many debts. Learn. Yes, uh, but okay. if we are taught, this is can be I'm avoided. Just, um, as you're talking, thinking about your business that you talked about before, which is Byron, Byron uh, Legacy, Legacy. Uh, and this one, how do the two inter- interrelate? And uh, who's looking after Byron now if you are focusing on this new venture? Yes, sir. We have a team of young, active people that we are working with. And that doing, and also I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm teaching as well. So mm. sometimes I'm at school and then have to go back to the business. Mm. So we have a team that we are working with. Mm. So that are taking off the business, by and legacy, and also we have teachers that are taking care of uh, mm. to the academy. This okay. Academy. Yeah. So we have you have to leverage. Okay. Here and in the, you can't work alone, so we need people. So we have people that are doing that. Okay. Can you just take a moment to explain to those who don't know? What Bayern Legacy does? Yeah, like I said, Bayern Legacy does barcoding. I mean, of late. Of yeah. late. Mm. No, we does barcoding. Mm. So we barcode the, pr- the products and also we, we, we product brand. We product uh, we brand the products. So, for example, you are a manufacturer. For example, manufacturing sugar. We are mm. able to brand your product, put the barcode. You are able to sell to retailers. You are able to export. Mm-hmm. So that's what we do. Okay. And, and um, in terms of uh, the type of products? Most of our clients, we're working with layered clients. We helped the clients with the branding. Mm. So different products that needed branding, we helped them with that. We would design mm-hmm. from logo to the, to the branding. Letter mm. is just ba- basically branding. We did that and mm. we worked so well with Leah. Our contract, I think it ended last year. Mm. And our clients are still using their brands now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and somebody might not know what barcoding means or why it's important. Can you take a moment to, to explain? Barcoding is very important because it helps you to increase your 
sales base. Because mm -hmm. normally, if you don't have a barcode, you are going to be forced to just sell across the streets. But with barcoding, it opens up for you uh, the market and the retailing. Mm -hmm. You're also able to export to other markets outside your country. Mm -hmm. So hence, you are helping also in the foreign trade. You are contributing towards the export. Yeah. You know, aspect of the base of, of the country, mm -hmm. and, and we are able to increase our trade surplus. Getting to the breakthrough campaign, I see that you've got it on a T-shirt. Yes. Sir. What's this? Are people uh, able to get hold of these T-shirts? Are they available to, Air. Uh, to to everyone? How does one get hold of them? Air, are these T-shirts we are selling them. But we are always encourage our our clients to come wearing them. Mm -hmm. So we sell them at a minimum price of seventy pula. Mm -hmm. Don't make up. You don't just to cover up the cost of t-shirt and branding. Mm -hmm. Because we just want, because that with us we are just we just want to give. Even even our charges are just so low 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 because we want every mother to afford to bring the child the children to our program. Mm -hmm. uh, How the charges look like? For pe like for example, breakthrough for English, it's a uh, two fifty per month. Mm -hmm. Breakthrough to start is two fifty per month. Mm -hmm. So Mozadi can afford. Mm -hmm. And the child comes, how many times per month? You got uh, different uh, platforms looking at the convenient uh, convenience mm -hmm. First one is the child comes twice in a week, in a month. Mm -hmm. And then the other option is that the child comes on Saturdays, two hours Saturdays. The other option is whereby the child comes in two weeks, two weeks, Monday to Friday, two weeks. But if the child, the mom, the, the child has to, uh, the, the parents want the child to come for a month every mm. day, so we want to double the amount. Mm -hmm. air. Okay, I asked you earlier about STEM. What about science? Are you strictly just English and Sotswana? Breakthrough is about reading basic English and Sotswana. So okay. science is written in, in English. Mm. So if you're able to read. Then you'll be able to understand. Okay, so science. you're most like you provide the key, you open the world for the child for yes. bigger and better things. Yes, sir. Okay. Because reading is basic way of life. Mm. You can't say I'm going to be a scientist, whereas you can't read even those codes or whatever they call it. You mm. can't read, you know, anything mm. basically. Air. Okay. And um, I'm just thinking ahead in terms of the next five years. Um, are you able to project for us what you see, where you see breakthrough in the next five years? Well, in the next five years, I want ourselves to be in different parts of Botswana because we get, you know, calls as far as Bozo and Shambe, as far as, you know, Bokhanti, as but we, because of resources, we can't be in different places at the same time. Provided we grow, we have funds, that's where we think we believe in to grow to and reach those you know, every corner of Botswana. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, reading is a way of life. As much as now we have talents that when you package your talent, mm -hmm. you can... Because I have cousins who are in, in you, uh, America because of tennis, playing tennis. But, you know what, they needed the Form 5, the, the, the old the levels basic, to be good. Yeah. So they needed to be good. As much as they, they have tended to be pro, but they needed that basic of Form 5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't really dodge or a education no longer key of success. Mm. But we need it. It's basic way of life. We can't dodge it. We can't run away from it. Mm. So we need to do something about it. Okay. Yeah. Now let me ask you about um, the 10, 15 years. I've, I've asked you first about five years. Yeah. Mm. What does your crystal ball tell you about the future of breakthrough? I want to have a school, primary mm -hmm. school. Primary school, I want to have a school whereby we don't rush this kids through. And also we cater for the ch children that have disabilities. We have inclusive education. Our environment cater for those children that have dis even physical disability and also cater for, so they get to know that we, we, we live in the same community, we live in the same country, we live in the same mm. society. So they get to know how that we don't laugh at each other. So th that could only happen if they get used to it from primary level. Mm -hmm. So not to think that oh, this person is different from us because he was formed in another way. So I want to have what you call inclusive, to provide inclusive education in that So process. a specialized sp English medium primary school? That kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. But still having what you call normal students mm. in this and also have 
because we are going to have facilities for those that have a challenge with the eyes. Mm. F- we are going to have facilities for those that are cha- that maybe use wheelchair. They are physically but disabled. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have class, but there's a time that they are going to be in one place. Those mm. that we say they are normal because every child is normal. Mm. Don't we say we, they are normal for the for better, for, for lack of weights, and together with this in the same room, there's mm. a time that you're going to have them. Mm-hmm. So that when tomorrow when they are the same office. They know that I need to respect him. They need to respect each other. Mm. Yes. Sir. Okay. So those plans are still a bit ahead. Yeah. Uh, a bit ahead. Or you're already looking for Madi. pieces of land, uh, like from the land boards and so on. To look we already to have a farm in Ramapatle. That's mm. what you're planning to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. But provided money is there. Okay. Would would do. Okay. Yeah. Build a school there. Build a school. In other words, you want to turn that thing to from. From farm to a community, to a school, community because we wanted school. to have also boarding facilities for okay. primary and also the children with have disability. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of looking at broadly at other institutions, um, because I, uh, special special education is not new to you. Um, are there any prospects for collaboration with any other organizations or schools? Yes, sir. We, we are willing to come and help. Mm. You know, I hear that there's a school in Mulepole that uh, it's a special school, education school. So mm. we are willing to come and help. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Now, um, this is the time of the show when you can ask me a question or two, if you have any. Yes, sir. One mm. thing that I want to ask is longevity. Mm. We have been in business for long because I believe every business person has a challenge that they face. But what made what kept you going? Mm-hmm. Maybe the resources were not there, or things were not working together. Because I believe all of us we we, we, we go through that. Yeah, we go through that. That one so doesn't stop. I mean, the the difficulty of making payroll, the difficulty of uh, covering your recurrent expenditure, mm-hmm. that doesn't stop. But the key thing is to believe in what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I have a nuggets of wisdom that says entitled. Winners mm-hmm. don't never quit, and quitters never win. Mm-hmm. That is something I've taken to heart. Mm-hmm. That even if you have to reconfigure um, your business model, even if you have to reposition yourself, mm-hmm. whatever you do, don't quit. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm a strong believer that the key thing is not is not to quit and mm-hmm. to persist, especially when you have set yourself. Uh, you're very clear on your mission mm-hmm. and your vision, and you've set yourself targets. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to quit as long as the vision is still visible. Mm-hmm. And you have to, to, to train yourself to make sure that the vision is, is at the forefront and mm-hmm. don't quit. Do I ask another one? Yes, if you like. Okay, I have another one. Because with us young people, when you, let me say business, business making money, mm. we use that profit for ourselves. We don't grow the business. So my, my um, what I would ask you to is how do you manage growth? Mm-hmm. Because, so yes, business at one point is going to grow, like you are saying. If you don't quit, definitely you are going to to grow and you know have fruits of what you've been doing. Yeah. So my challenge that we have experienced, I think Lena, I have, I have that challenge whereby mm. we don't know how to manage growth. Rather, I take that money, I buy a house, whereas the, the, the business doesn't have an office mm. or doesn't have any property on its own. So then I want to ask you, how do you manage growth? Yeah, by the way, there's nothing wrong with buying the house. I mean, I teach a um, a real estate um, mentorship class Mm -hmm. where I I emphasize that, look, if you can get yourself uh, a house, Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's through house hacking, I teach them about house hacking, Mm -hmm. or or some other method like, I have another method called, Mm -hmm. you buy you rehabilitate you um you 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 know you you rent out and mm-hmm. you repeat that process mm-hmm. so it's a way of of growing wealth um, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that the key thing is to do it conscious uh of of of, of what you're doing and with an attitude of frugality mm-hmm. my own personal view is that you cannot succeed if you are not frugal Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. don't pay attention to I to spend. to your numbers mm-hmm. and ensure that uh, you don't spend recklessly or carelessly, mm-hmm. and then managing growth, it's a work in progress as well. Mm-hmm. You need to constantly try to train your team. Mm-hmm. You need to constantly 
be building new team members and letting others go. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a book by uh, Collins called From Good to Great, mm -hmm. where you determine who stays in the bus, who's, who moves out of the bus, mm -hmm. as it were. Mm -hmm. So that is an ongoing process, and it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, if you have a clear goal that you set for yourself, and you have a vision and a mission, mm -hmm. I think you can overcome that, because there's not a single successful person who has faced uh, the idea that they want to quit. Mm -hmm. There's not a single, um, you know, successful individual politician, business person mm -hmm. who has not been faced with the, the possibility or the of quitting or mm -hmm. temptation to quit. Mm -hmm. So the idea is to resolve to soldier on. Mm -hmm. So back to you as we conclude, Ma. Yeah. Uh, it was a short conversation, but um, the main thing is the viewer there mm -hmm. should leave this conversation with something inspirational, something uplifting. Well, what I could say to parents, don't give up on your child. Make an effort. You know, we are here to help you. Come to us, we'll help you. And to entrepreneurs, never give up. You, you, you fall, you rise up, you fall, you rise up. Finally, you're going to get it. So, Let's push. It's our nation. It needs us, so we contribute to, it, to the to the con, you know to the growth of this nation. Be it in whatever, be it ten percent or whatever that you can do, whatever that you could. So thank you, sir. You're most welcome. You've thank been a great you. guest. Thank you, sir. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No, before we we leave it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just hold before we leave it. Give the viewer your contact details and your contract address where they can find you. Okay, our number is 7253-6011. We are located in Block 6, just by Universal Estate. And also on Facebook, our page is Toda, T-O-W-D-A-H, dash Mona K. So that's where you are. You find our videos of how we help our how we help our kids and stuff like that. Thank you. All right.